All right, once again, we're back looking at some geometry. Uh, this time we're on page, page 114, page 18. And Jason asked for some help on number eight. So let's take just a minute to look at that, and then he wanted some help on number nine. Let's, look at, let's talk about what this theorem is, because again, we're going to have to use this. So on page um, 17, now there's a long proof of why this is true, but what's the bottom line? It says the measure of an angle formed by a tangent and a secant drawn from the point of tangency is equal to one half the measure of the intercepted arc. Wow, that's a mouthful. And part of it is, it's full of words that we still are not totally confident using and comfortable with their definition, perhaps. Tangent just means the line touches the circle in one point. Okay, so I've drawn a few different tangent lines touching it, okay? Then what I did is went from this point where they are tangent and drew a chord. That's called a secant. So when I draw that chord or secant, what this theorem 58, what theorem 58 is saying is that this angle here that's formed is going to be half of this intercepted arc. So if I know that this arc is 60 degrees, then this angle is 30. Okay, up here, if I, if this intercepted arc from here to here is, let's say it's 100 degrees, then that means this angle here has to be half of that, or 50 degrees. So that's what all of page um, 17 is explaining, is this theorem, okay? But now we get to use it. So let's talk about how we're going to use it. We don't have to prove it anymore. We can use it in our proof. So we have all this stuff given, and we're trying to get to the point where we say that angle B, A, C, so let's label that, is equal to the measure A, O, B. Whoops, I wrote that wrong. A, O, B, it's supposed to be. Let me just make sure that, da, 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 yes, AOB. And we're trying to say that it's equal to half of AOB. Okay, half of this. Well, we, the theorem doesn't say anything about this angle, but it does tell us, theorem 58 says that this angle here will be equal to half of this intercepted arc. Do you see that? Intercepted arc? Okay. So we can use the theorem to make that statement. This angle here is equal to half of this. Then, this is something we should remember from way back in a much earlier pace. A central angle, which is this angle here, at the end point is the center of the circle, this angle is also equal to the intercepted arc. So this angle and this arc are always going to be equal. Okay? So then we can make that statement, and then we, I think, can just do a substitution. So the measure of this arc has to be equal to the measure of the central angle, and then we can substitute... Um, into that statement and end up at our at the point that we're trying to prove our conclusion. This one actually is kind of a short proof. They only really have two statements past the given and the final substitution point. Just two statements. And the big one is to use theorem 58. Okay, so I'll let you write that one up. I'm going to study the next one just a little bit before I try to make a video to help you with number nine.